She's a Yonsei student, Yon. <laughs> Beyonce tour guy. That is the central library. Uh -huh. Hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing something very special because I wanted to start a new series where I introduce foreigners in Korea and their life here, foreigner students or foreign workers in Korea. And today I have a special guest here. Hello! Hello, Yukta! Yukta is my very first guest and she is a student here at Yonsei University. So I wanted to introduce her and um, I asked you guys to ask me some questions on Instagram that you had for her so we're going to answer all the questions yeah. and we're at like the campus as we're speaking yeah just we are sitting on sitting. the campus floor the weather is so beautiful and yeah, nice you today. can see spring guys yes, it is spring. spring so I'm going to call this series soul talks okay because my channel it's name is soul soul, soul. okay yes yeah, so this is episode one of soul, soul talks. talks so I'm gonna start with the questions now that you guys gave me on Instagram. Would you introduce yourself first, like your name, age, and where you're from? Okay, so hello guys. I'm Kate's friend. My name is Yukta Tyagi, and I'm Indian. Mm -hmm. I'm studying in Yonsei University, and I'm, as of now, like in Korean age, I'm 22 years old, but, but international, international age, age is 21. 21. You were and born 2001. Yeah, 2001. Same age as my brother. <laughs> Younger brother. And I'll just, I'm just chilling here, mm -hmm. doing part time modeling. Yes, she's a part time model. Yes. And she also did a freelance um, live MC with me at my yeah. work. So that's how we met each other. And basically, she's my colleague. Would you tell them how long you lived in Seoul? So in Seoul, I've lived like for a year. A year. But in Korea, I've lived for no, three because I came to Busan first. Oh. And I did my Korean language program from Busan. In Busan. And then after that, I moved to Seoul because of university. Oh, wow. So when you first came to Korea, you were renting a place in Busan? Uh, no, actually, because my dad used to work here. Oh. He had a place already. Mm -hmm. And I was living with him. But in 2020, he moved to Dubai for mm -hmm. his work. So I ended up living with my godparents. Mm -hmm. uh, they also work here, oh. but they work in Busan. So I was living with them mm -hmm. for a while. And then I thought that it's time to like move out because mm -hmm. I wanted to come to Seoul. Mm -hmm. I wanted to experience the university life, even though it's like COVID. Mm -hmm. At least I could meet my, you know, classmates mm -hmm. from my university. So I ended up moving to Seoul wow. because of that. So for those of you who don't know, Busan is in the south of Korea yeah. and it's really beautiful. It has like an ocean. I did a Busan vlog, so go Yes, go that. check it out. Yeah, yeah it's a beautiful vlog. How world. would you say um, like your life in Busan versus Seoul, which one do you like more? I do not have a comparison for really? them because um, when I was living in Busan, mm -hmm. it had its like perks mm -hmm. and Seoul has its like perks too. But yeah. if I had to choose one, I'd say Seoul mm -hmm. because I'm getting a lot of job opportunities here yeah. and meeting a lot of good people mm -hmm. and interesting people that I can actually communicate with yeah. comfortably because mm -hmm. in Busan I I was obviously happy to be there yeah. and ha I was happy to like you know be there with my friends and mm -hmm. we used to speak in Korean but it was a language bar barrier at times because mm -hmm. none of us spoke English like I used to speak but my friends didn't mm -hmm. so it was limited so when I came to Seoul it was like a new beginning a new mm -hmm. opportunity kind of thing Busan was kind of chill yeah so I, I, I don't have a comparison. Yeah. I love both, but yeah. I'll choose Seoul. But Seoul is definitely more bustling <laughs> yeah. and more things to do, I guess. Yeah, you know, like, because I'm from Mumbai. Yeah. Mumbai is also, like, very bustling. Uh -huh. So I think Seoul fits me more uh -huh. in that, like, aspect. And do you want to introduce your major then? Yeah, I am majoring in international studies mm -hmm. of Underwood International College. So it's basically a department of Yonsei University where your classes are offered in English. Uh -huh. And they have like a wide variety of subjects or majors you can choose from. How are your classes, like the difficulty level of it? So each class like gets at difficult as you go into the next semester. Yeah. 
but the thing is like because we are also like growing during that period of time and we are learning consistently if you have paid attention in your classes mm -hmm. it will be easy for you to understand but it's still like sometimes difficult to keep up with because mm -hmm. there's a lot of research you have to do you have a choice between the classes you can choose you also can see the ratings of each class and the professors on every time so if you get admitted i definitely suggest looking at the ra ratings mm -hmm. by different you know students but don't believe them completely because sometimes um, it comes from like a personal bias. Somebody will like have a very good class experience, yeah. somebody won't. My classes are very interesting mm -hmm. and very nice. Cause What's your favorite class you've taken so far? So far, my favorite, I have like two favorite classes. One is um, cyber security. It's where we learned about countries and their cyber security. <gasps> That's so cool. Yeah, and how they like develop it yeah. and how they like try to prevent hacks mm -hmm. and from the other countries during elections mm -hmm. or etc etc and currently i'm taking this class cause called international security mm -hmm. like the same professor is like teaching your security it. class yeah <laughs> this one's about like nuclear you know bombings mm -hmm. and nuclear wow. attacks or just the security framework in terms of military defense a lot of people asked how the application process was like for uh, getting into yonsei yes so a lot of people usually apply from common app mm -hmm. but in my case i applied directly from the yonsei portal ah. website when they have the applications every year open like three times and i applied in i think the winter for like the fall applications mm -hmm. and i got in in spring so I started in 2020 and the application pro process was just to apply, like write my passport details, put a mm -hmm. passport photograph in there. The an application fee is mm -hmm. a bit expensive, it's $100. Uh -huh. uh, did you have to write an essay? Or? Yeah, so there were two essays yeah. that we had to write. So for the first essay, like you are given five topics mm -hmm. and you have to choose from them. And each topic is like kind of personal because mm -hmm. they want to get to know you how good you are at academic writing mm -hmm. can you like you know handle the pressure maybe in the university yeah. are you fit for the university and my suggestion is not to sound like overconfident mm -hmm. but just the perfect balance between like confidence and like wanting to know more mm -hmm. they definitely need like two recommendation letters what about your gpa do they oh, look at your gpa yeah they do look at your gpa and it is suggested like to have a gpa above i think 2.2 mm. oh that's pretty four. low then but yonsei's percentage requirement is 80 percent mm. and more okay and if it's the medical school it has to be above 90. wow that's hard yeah mm. and they definitely look at your math and english grades because mm -hmm. i remember just go visiting the uic office regarding something and yeah. they had like my my report card was right there i don't know why but it was right there and they had like highlighted the math and the English part. Oh wow, she has some inside info. <laughs> yeah. People ask what's special about like Korean university versus maybe university in India. Oh, I think the best part is that we can make our own timetable. Mm -hmm. When you go to university in India, a lot of the colleges give you your timetable, like the classes you are supposed to attend. Mm -hmm. And it can get really tiring because I think like, I'm sorry if anybody disagrees with this, but this is coming from personal experience, mm -hmm. but Indian education really l relies on a lot of memorization. Mm -hmm. And it can get very stressful at times, mm -hmm. especially for those who are in the medical or engineering fields mm -hmm. or law and chartered accountant fields. Not only you're supposed expected to just study well, you're also expected to take on internships as many as you can. I think in Korea, the fact that we can make our own timetable and like uh, relax a bit mm -hmm. feels good. And the thing is that uh, a lot of Indian universities don't have the whole two months of vacation. Like we have winter and summer vacation, mm -hmm. right? I Indian universities, usually you get holidays. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes there's no set There's vacation. no set vacation. <gasps> And if you have like a longer vacation, usually you have exams after that uh -huh. or before that. So students and my friends that I know, like one of them, she goes to this college called D.Y. Patil College. Mm -hmm. All these students are usually very, very stressed. Uh -huh. But at the same time, they do learn a lot 
and even over here it's you learn a lot but it's just the difference mm. the difference is there but not having vacation yeah. oh my gosh i can never <laughs> do that people ask which korean university is easiest to get into as an international student I there's no such thing yeah. as which korean university it's is the easiest. easiest to get into because you see everyone applies either directly to the university yeah. or through the kgsp programs mm -hmm. or the scholarship programs right and the scholarship programs are going through the Indian and Korean embassy or like mm -hmm. any other embassy. Mm -hmm. And the Korean embassy is making sure that they pick the like best students out there. Mm -hmm. you, but definitely the most popular yeah, ones. They're the be worst. Yeah. Seoul University, Korea University, yeah. and Yonsei University. That's the yes. sky university. Yeah, they're of the Korea. most difficult to yeah. get into. Mm -hmm. So everybody just study hard. Study hard. <laughs> Don't try to find an easy university. Shortcut, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so people are curious about your first impression of Korea when you like first got here. I first came here in 2015. Mm -hmm. wow. I came here for a vacation because my dad was working yeah. here. And I was like, wow, a whole new world. Mm -hmm. Like I was, re I really liked being here because it was completely different. It was cold when I came so I was like very happy to experience that <laughs> your first cold <laughs> <laughs> like it, it was like I like how cold it was uh, you know I, I don't like hot weather and so, you're from India because <laughs> it's always hot and yeah. humid so I was just like very excited to be here and we met a lot of nice people when I first came here like mm -hmm. there was an uncle who just like let go of a cigarette like dropped it in the drain to take our picture and Aww. this other time I went to Jeju alone and because it was pouring that day, mm -hmm. my umbrella broke and this lady, she had a restaurant. That was the only restaurant in that area. Mm -hmm. She took me in, she gave me free food and then she drove me to the closest bus stop which had a roof. So, oh my god, so you I, experienced some Korean kindness yeah. from strangers. So I was like, so like this place is cool, like yeah. it's really nice. I, can, I don't mind coming and studying here. Uh, was it scary moving to a country you didn't speak the language? How do you manage it all? And I guess, um, how was it for you, like learning Korean for the first time? Mm. Not scary, but it was nerve-wracking at first because I really didn't know what to do. Like, I did not know that you can you have to press stop on the bus uh. to, like, you know, make it stop. Because oh in gosh. India, the buses stop at every stop. Uh. So I was just like, it was a bit nerve-wracking at first. Mm -hmm. But eventually, if you like the country, if you like the food, if mm. you like the culture, you get used to it and you like in like enjoy it in your own way about like learning the language i think korean is very similar to indian languages oh really it's similar to hindi it's also mm -hmm. it's the most similar to south indian languages mm -hmm. like tamil so i think mm -hmm. that because of that it was very easy to learn and because you, you see you have that thing right the patim and yeah, yeah. So in, in, we have like that in Hindi oh. mantra. So like if you, if you have A, even we have like an A. Oh. So I just compared the two and I memorized it and I like it was very easy to form wow. sentences because it is similar to the way we speak Hindi as at, like in a sense. Yeah. That's so cool. I didn't know that. What's your level of Korean speaking right now? I think I'm a, I'm a topic four. Topic four. Because I finished my intermediate mm -hmm. classes and if I, I want to do the advanced ones mm -hmm. and if I do advanced I'll probably go up to like five or six. So how long did you would you say it took you to like get to that level? So it took me six months to get to that level That's along really with fast, isn't it? <laughs> She's smart. <laughs> It took me six months to get to that level along with like a lot of uh, practicing because I used to only sp I was in an environment where nobody spoke English mm. So I was relying on the Korean skills to like, yeah. you know live it, it, So I guess it might have been a good thing that you started in Busan, right? Yeah, because if you started in your life in Seoul I feel like you'd have met a yeah. lot of foreigner friends and yes. only speak English yes. but in Busan there's less foreigners so you really yeah. got immersed into the Korean environment I agree because um, everybody in my Korean language program like there was a majority of Vietnamese Chinese mm -hmm. and Indonesian students and they like they always mentioned how it was difficult for them to speak but mm -hmm. the thing is that they would speak to each other in Vietnamese yeah. and their respective languages but whereas I only had Korean to yeah. like interact <laughs> the Korean alphabet you can just memorize it in a day yeah, so you can yeah. technically learn to read and write in it Day. Yeah, technically you can, but just not understand. Just not understand. <laughs> you, can, you could learn the alphabets. Yeah. yeah. Um, people ask, do you ever experience racism living in Korea? I I don't know where I could call it racism because mm. nobody has ever like um 
been rude to me because of my culture or my skin color but I have experienced like rude experiences because I'm a foreigner mm. but I know but I have friends of darker skin tones mm -hmm. who have experienced racism mm -hmm. my personal rude experiences it was like I was not allowed to get on the bus when COVID what? happened initially what yeah it was this was in Busan though like I was they didn't let me get on the bus because I'm a foreigner oh my God. and I was just like why he, I, I asked, I asked yeah. him in Korean why. He's like, "Wego kini So I'm like, "Okay, okay. <gasps> oh I won't, I won't get on." So That's I had to terrible. wait for another one. But other than that, thankfully, my experiences are very less. I think the racism is pretty less in Korea compared to other countries. Though. Did you experience any culture shock when you first got here? Not really. Because in my opinion, Korean culture and Indian culture are very similar. Actually, I was a, a bit shocked because. Uh, nobody was wearing shoes in their houses and that's exactly what we do at home oh, wow. so I was just like okay this is nice I think a lot of Indian culture is similar to Korean culture because mm -hmm. at the end of the day we are Asian countries just like how Korea like is all about family even India is the same mm -hmm. it's about respecting your elders it's the same mm -hmm. the only different thing that I'd like to say that kind of might be a culture shock was the drinking culture <laughs> Uh, that I that was like wow. Yeah, drinking culture is, in Korea is crazy. Cause it's for socializing, yeah. right? It's it, even business deals happen when you're drinking, yeah, and business partners do drink. Not drink in India. They do drink in India, but uh, it's not like a culture thing. You know, it's like just a okay. Let's have a drink together. What drinks do you guys drink there? Like alcohol. My dad, he's big on whiskey. Whiskey. Yeah, and I think a lot of Indians love rum. So all the hard liquor. The hard liquor, yeah. Uh, and the, uh, or for a light day, it's the beer. Uh, and I think that if they would love soju, because my dad came here and he loved soju. Uh, <laughs> he loved so it. Funny. Basically, no culture shock in terms of like social hierarchy and things like that. Oh yeah, okay, that good, good. You brought that up because I did not think about it. I noticed that it also it really matters how you like look mm, here, right? Yeah. You need to always look presentable. A lot of people just own like luxury bags mm -hmm. or maybe it you never know it could be real or fake but they own yeah. them to like emphasize that they are yeah. they have a stance in society mm -hmm. and they have money when i first came here i saw like people put on makeup and they went to the convenience store it, it's big on appearance mm -hmm. and what do you look like on the outside the next question is what was the first thing that surprised you when you first got to Korea? Just like small things. Mm -hmm. How well maintained the washrooms are because in public toilets can be really dirty mm -hmm. but it was really clean and overall I was just like I was just in awe like wow even the technology uh, like how the bus the area has like heating uh, during heated winters seats. yeah heated yeah. seats i love that about korea and it's the small things that are surprising and every now and then i learn something new yeah even though i've been here for a pretty long time mm -hmm. what's it like making friends in korea or was it hard for you to make like korean friends or even foreigner friends in korea so you're my only korean friend <laughs> really? yes. but you're you're not you're korean <laughs> but you're like yeah, yeah like I you've, you've lived abroad and, yeah. most of your life uh-huh so I, I've never like uh, made like Korean Korean friends mm -hmm. and I think if you see TikToks and like you see expat videos mm -hmm. all of them talk about this topic very often it's actually really difficult to make Korean friends, friends Korean friends because you're not I've, at least in my case I'm not in an environment where I get to meet them often or like socialize with them especially because her classes are online online, right online plus yeah. in English how about your foreigner friends? Where did you meet them? So my foreigner friends, uh, some of them I met at the university. Mm -hmm. But my best friend, I met her while clubbing. <laughs> we, we, I, I went for I went for clubbing that day, uh. and I, she saw me, and I saw her, and we were like, oh, another brown person. <laughs> so, it can be difficult at first to like find the right person who like matches your mm. energy. It's like like anywhere. Like you go to a new high school, yeah. you make new friends, mm -hmm. you go through experiences with them and the real ones stay similarly it's the same over here cost of living in seoul oh. minimum monthly expenses required
required? <laughs> <laughs> I think that it varies from person to person because mm -hmm. if you're living in the dormitories mm -hmm. and you're on a full scholarship, some students can become the residential assistants and get a scholarship even for their dormitories. In that aspect, you only need money for food. For the people who don't get scholarships, let's say, how much is the tuition for the, Yonsei University? The tuition for Underwood International College is mm -hmm. seven million two hundred thousand Korean won. Mm -hmm. Around so that, like around seven thousand. Around seven thousand dollars for a semester fee. or a for year? a semester. Uh, for a semester. For a year, uh -huh. it's fourteen million. Okay, so fourteen thousand. And does that include housing or no? No, it's no. just the tuition. So dormitories, you have um, single dormitories, which are two million won. One semester is two million. If you're living in a dormitory shared by two people yeah then the cost of uh, f for one semester is 900,000 Korean won okay okay that's a lot and better and then let's just say around 8,000 per yeah, semester yeah um then how much would you say you spend in a month just on food and like shopping um, so I mean this varies by you, person if obviously you, if you like cooking yeah. at home you can allot like hundred dollars to 150 dollars per week mm -hmm. if you want to get an apartment outside so rooms are Office not that big are so small yeah. and usually they're around like it depends but 600 to like up to a thousand yeah for office stalls so well mine is 500 oh really yeah mm -hmm. okay so she lives in Shincheon yeah. and it's around 500. It depends on your deposit yeah, yeah. as well yeah. in Korea. So And usually most of them are like either 5 million, 5,000 USD yeah. to 10,000 USD. Yeah. A lot of people are curious on how difficult it is to get a job in Korea if you're a foreigner and if Korean is mandatory for those jobs. So the thing is that uh, it depends on what kind of job you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So first of all, if you want to get a job, you need to have experience here. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll talk about two things, the job and the internship part. Okay. So internships are very difficult to get if you don't speak Korean. Mm -hmm. Because usually they prefer like Korean students or after that they prefer foreigners who are fluent in Korean, mm -hmm. like yeah. amazingly fluent such mm -hmm. that they can do their excels their microsoft documents they can like like talk in korean about mm -hmm. whatever they're doing mm -hmm. and then comes the foreigners who speak english i was still like lucky enough to like get an internship period with lip hop mm -hmm. i interned with them because i was already modeling for them but i was a marketing intern and i was responsible for communicating with um their celebrities and influencers mm -hmm all around the world and we used to like send them our product just re responsible for making that list and mm -hmm. communicating with them mm -hmm. and work is even like more difficult because mm -hmm. they ask you for your topic examination mm -hmm. so if you do not have your topic and if you don't have a topic for or above mm -hmm. it's impossible to work here because legally if you want to work here you need a topic mm -hmm. but, but for part-time you can get away with it um, okay, I didn't know it was legally required. Yeah, it's legally required. Wow, that's hard then. So for people who, I guess, cannot speak fluent Korean... You could or... work in international companies. Oh, yeah. I guess there are lots of freelancer opportunities for yeah. foreigners here, like modeling, acting. But, but those are all freelancers, so, so yeah. it's not it's like not a stable set. income. Yeah, it's not stable yeah. income. Yeah. And sometimes like you're not even getting paid the right amount because the ag if you're signed with an agency, the mm -hmm. agency takes like 30% of your salary. Uh, foreigners do get kind of ripped off in terms of like contract and pays yeah. for sure. So you definitely have to like study and know your worth and yeah. like your You gotta like make sure cost. you know the salaries and everything. Yeah properly and read the contracts well if, mm -hmm. if you cannot read get someone to translate them for you so that was actually the last question that we had for today that was a really long like <laughs> thank, you, like, like, thank you so yeah. much for like telling your whole story to our viewers A anything for yes. you kate oh, thank you <laughs> like share and subscribe to kate's channel guys okay. she's doing so much thank you and guys so well. oh thank you thank you guys all for asking all these questions and i hope you 
you enjoyed your time like sharing your story. I loved it. Yes, I will link Yukta's um, all of her social medias in the <laughs> description bar and you can go check her out. I and hope her video helps you guys out to come to Korea if you want to. Yeah, I hope it really helps you guys um, understand a foreigner's perspective on Korea. That's what I really wanted to like accomplish with this like Soul Talk um, series because uh, there are so many foreigners in Korea and people are so curious on like how to move here and like life here, costs mm -hmm. and all these things. And if you guys have any other questions for our future like guests on this channel, then please leave them in the oh, comments. comments. Okay, thank you guys so much. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so